In H4, is there a charge? No. There's two elements with no charge, which means it is not a polyatomic ion, so it is not ammonium. And like I said, if you put it, it's okay. I did this to trick you, and I tricked you. Thank you for trying. I am not mad at you. Now, if you've sat there and did nothing, yes, I am mad at you. Since it is not a polyatomic ion, you have nitrogen, which is a nonmetal, and hydrogen, which is a nonmetal. Two nonmetals bonded together, covalent bond, and the name covalent bonds, we use the prefixes. Thank you, Addy. So in this, <coughs> nitrogen, there's only one nitrogen. So you do not put a prefix with it. Because it's one, we never use mono for the first element. So nitrogen, fours, tetra, hydride. Yes, unless there's three elements. If there's three elements, it's a dead giveaway like right here. Because I'll use a third element to hide a charge. <coughs> there's three elements here. You'll hear me talk about this on the video if you go back and watch the one from last year. I say three or more elements, there is a polyatomic. Find the polyatomic. There's three elements here. I have calcium, <coughs> CA, carbon, which is C, and oxygen, which is O. Where's the polyatomic? The CO. Then you look at calcium, because now we're going to figure out how to name this thing. Calcium is a metal, and it comes from the second column. So the second column of calcium means it has a fixed charge. So we name it based off the monatomic ion rules. So it's just calcium because it's a cation. And then we have to name the polyatomic that's with it. CO. What's the root with CO? Carbonate. CO3, two minus. There's the root. How many fewer oxygens does this have than the root? Two. Since it has two fewer, that means it's hypo. So hypo carbon I. Two fewer than the root. No, because hypocarbon, the polyatomic, has it in it. So you move here. Is there a polyatomic? How do you know there's polyatomic? There's three, there's three elements. Dead giveaway. Polyatomic. <laughs> Find the polyatomic. SO5. Look at the cation. Is it a D block dude or follow the D block dude rules? No, because it's barium. It's in the second column, which means fixed charge. So name it off a of monatomic. Barium. What is sulfate? In that case. <coughs> it'll have eight at the end. But this is the thing. Sulfate, SO4, two negative. This is SO5. It's one more oxygen. So you add a prefix. Per sulfate. So if you had like a seven, would it still be per and eight? Like if there, you know how like the five is one over the four. Yeah. What, and if it was a six, would it be? Would you still put the? You won't have six. I still goes five. So if it's 
Why would you have a picture? Why would you have a So into. Not Good job. It is a trig. This is nitrogen. N2 is nitrogen because it is one of the seven diatomics that exist in nature bonded to itself. <clears throat> so if it was like H2? Chlorine. O2, oxygen. H2, hydrogen. Will we get a list of periodic uh, table? You'll have a pair of them. Always talk to see where we get one of those two. No. No chance. Great. Which is why when we went over the oxyanion nomenclature, I said, this changes the world. Learn the root. That's all I've done. I, I don't look at that and go per sulfate. I look and go, it's SO, so it deals with sulfate. Sulfate's SO4, 2 minus. Okay. Well, that's one more, so it has to have per at the beginning. That's, that's literally it. Barium hypochlorite. Uh, barium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is 2 plus. Oh. Then we have a oh. hypochlorite. CLO. CLO. Two negative. Like the negatives that was talking about. CLO. Because chlorate is CLO3 minus. <coughs> Hypo means two fewer than the root. So that was supposed to be a two No, two fewer. There's two less oxygens. Look at chlorate. Chlorate is CLO3 minus. Hypochlorite's two fewer oxygens, so three minus two is one, so CLO minus. So in this, now you're going to cross the charge. So this one comes over here for the barium, this two comes over here for the hypochlorite. So we have BA, which is barium, and here's where things get interesting. We have ClO, which is hypochlorite, but we need two of them. So you can't just put a two down here. If you put a two down here, that's going to say two oxygens, not two hypochlorites. You have to put the polyatomic in parentheses, then put the two outside. That's telling you two hypochlorites. So that's the answer? Yeah. That was so close. And please, so please, close. please, because I have some people making mistakes in here. This is not an I, that is an L. Okay? If I'm writing an I as iodine, I will write the I like that. This is L, that's I. <clears throat> oh, this is funny. I didn't even realize that. Uh, Mr. Hall. Yeah. So I think you explained this, but how did you get it the parentheses? I did the parentheses because I need multiple of a hypochlorite. Okay. If you need multiple of a polyatomic, you have to put it in parentheses. <clears throat> Chlorate. I just gave it to you, but it's the root ClO3 minus. Oh, that right. We come over here to sodium nitrate. Sodium is Na+. Because it comes from the first column. Nitrate is a polyatomic. Eight tells you it's the root. So nitrate, NO3 minus. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so they just pair up. Na, NO, 3. In that case where it's a 1 to 1, you don't. You don't want to. If you cross that one, you're still going to be okay. But if you cross something that's like, if we did a calcium... Um, calcium carbonate. What's the charge on calcium? 2 plus. What's the charge on carbonate? 2 minus. It's a 2 and a 2. It's a 1 to 1. So it would just be CaCO3. 3. 
yeah, it was carbon A. CO32 minus. Carbon monoxide. <coughs> is there a polyatomic? Monoxide. <coughs> when you see a prefix, it spells it out for you. So, just write it out. Carbon, it's a C. Is there any prefix with it? No. Which means there's only one. Mon, which means one, but oxide, so oxygen, and there's only one. Mon, mon is one. So CO. Practice is tomorrow. I kind of get this. So we could come at first period, like first lunch. Yeah. Okay. If I'm not in here, I'm walking around on duty. Since I don't have a, a seminar, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Now, the last two nomenclature rules. Uh, honestly, I like to say no. They pretty much spell themselves out. But you've got to be able to notice them. And a lot of kids trick themselves into thinking something when it's not. Now, this is the one I get all juiced about. <laughs> Mainly because when we get here, we're finishing nomenclature, which means we're getting ready to move on to some very exciting stuff. So in this, we are going to talk about acid nomenclature. The acid like in your stomach. So the acid nomenclature. So within this, what you're going to see, you're going to see two different types. And this is why we wait this from the last, and these are the last two rules. The first one is one that you have heard of before and <coughs> talked about before. Is what we call a binary acid. Remember what binary stands for. Two. So it's two elements together. The second one is the one that I have warned you and warned you and warned you about to make sure you've got something, which I'm quite nervous in this class right now. Number two, <coughs> oxy acids. So we're going to start this off with the more simplistic one. We're going to start with the binary acids and then we'll break into the oxy acids. The oxy acids are based off of the oxy anions. So within this, let's start with the binary acids. Within these, it is crucial <coughs> for you to understand something. Binary acid, you've already said, it, made of two elements. Now in this, you can pretty much like have an idea of what the two is going to be. It's not as simple as just throwing these things together other than saying it's an acid. Your first element, this will always be the first element whenever you are dealing with an acid. Whether it's a binary acid or if it's an oxy acid, it does not matter. It's always this one element. It is always <coughs> hydrogen. The reason behind this is this is what an acid is defined to be. Literally, they give up hydrogen ions, or it's also called protons, because within it, hydrogen has atomic number one, which means one proton, one electron, and within that, what happens is these uh, other <coughs> elements will literally pull that electron off, which leaves hydrogen ion, which is just a one plus, so it's really a proton. And they'll release it off in solution. That's how we measure if something is an acid, and that's how you look at how acidic something is. Now within this, that's the first one. It's always hydrogen. The second one is normally 
One of the house. The halogens is the 17th column. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, all those. That's what you're looking at. So within this, there's some naming aspects to it that makes it simple. This is why it's simple. The first part that you will have, it will be a prefix. Because you have hydrogen, this is always the first one, you have a prefix, prefix of hydro. That should sound familiar to you. From the hydro, you then have the more electronegative elements, so these halogens. What you'll do with it is you'll take the root, change the ending, but you're not going to change it how you're used to. We'll change the ending. To ick. <coughs> There's the first rule. Hydro is a prefix. Second, you keep the root of whatever it is. And you change the ending to it, and then third, you write acid at the end. I should have said that in second period, I didn't. If you're in second period and watching this, it's still fair game for you. I'll stress it tomorrow. So we'll put acid at the end. Why? You don't have to, but in this class, you have to. Because for some reason, us chemistry people, we and ever we're dealing with an acid, we say acid at the end for whatever reason. So examples of these you've seen before, like a perfect example is what's in your stomach. HCl. So in this, follow the rules. Hydrogen is first, and this is the moment where I like to stress it. Just because hydrogen's in the molecule doesn't mean it's an acid. If hydrogen is first, it's an acid. This is an acid. That is not an acid. Hydrogen's in the molecule, but it's not first. Not acid. So hydrogen has to be first. Must be first. Hands down. That goes for binary acids and the oxy acids. So in this. You have hydrogen and chlorine. That's two elements. What type of acid are you dealing with? <coughs> binary acid. So name it based off binary acid rule. First, prefix, hydro. How do you know which one to use? You'll be able to tell. Huh? Hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid. Hydro because of the hydrogen. Step two. The root. What's the root? Comes from chlorine. <laughs> We're going to remove the ending, the I N E off. So is that one word? Add it, and then write acid at the end. Hydrochloric acid. So that's one word. One more, except for acid. Hydrochloric is one word. You can do it the other way. This is the thing. With the acids, this is why I think they're more simple than what students make them. It's spelled out for you. If I gave you <coughs> hydroidic acid, H I, H I, that's it. Now this is the thing that goes hand in hand with this. How do you know how many hydrogens to put? It's based off the charge. All of everything from the 17th column, the halogens, all carry a negative one charge. Since they have a negative one charge, to balance it out, it takes one hydrogen. I agree. These are simplistic. Here's the highlight. <coughs> 
binary acids are named starting with the prefix hydro. This is for binary acids. Everything changes when you go to oxy acids. So let's go to oxy acids. Now, I love y'all. And I warned you, and I warned you when we went over this nomenclature for these oxy acids. You must have got it now. I pray that you heeded my warning. Because if you didn't, <coughs> this is going to end bad. And you're behind, which means that you should see me at lunch tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday. So this oxy These are the oxy acids, which are based off of the oxy anion. This should look familiar to you. Uh, really? What is that? But these are not our friends. I'm at the poly. Oh, it's on the guy on. These little bad boys. What? All right, so. Changing of the ending. Okay. Here I've drawn a box. <coughs> because this box is based off of what you've already seen before. You've seen this, you've been using this, this should be familiar to you. Root 8 per root 8 root 8 hypo root 8 Every one of these had a meaning to them. We're still using them. We used them at the beginning of this class. Root 8 was the most common. If you remember, I told you, this is the one to memorize and we'll build off of it. Like per root 8. Per root 8 meant one more oxygen and the root. Then you have the root that's the most common. Then you have rootite. Rootite was one less oxygen than the root. And hyporootite, remember back to it. That's the one that within it what we had <coughs> was based off the root. Hyporootite is two fewer oxygens than root. <coughs> now here's the thing. What you have here at the top is polyatomic. Wrong one. The polyatomic suffix. It changes. We go from the polyatomic suffix over here to what we change to the oxy acid suffix. Here's the thing. This is what you have to memorize. This is why it's important. If you've gotten this, then this becomes much simpler. If you haven't gotten this, 
This has become a new world record for you. You take the endings and the endings change it for you. Eight becomes it. Eight becomes us. O U X. And you write acid at the end. So here's what you're looking at. Everything will stay the same, so you have the per root, but we're going to change the index. So you got root, root, and hypo root. Those stay the same, but the endings change. Per root means when it's an acid, so we add hydrogen to the beginning, Gets perutic acid. Root it acid. So how exactly do you tell that and the O or the water? I can't see that. What's a polyatomic ion have? Charge. Polyatomic ions have two elements and a charge. So whenever you had hydrogen to it, how many elements is that going to make you? Three which is not a binary. So with the binaries, they don't have charges. Right. The anion does, but it's hidden with the hydrogen. Root us acid. <coughs> Hypo root us acid. Hypo root us acid. Okay? I'm going to be honest. This is as far as I made it in second period. I'm going to stop here. Don't you dare start zoning out on me or I promise you I'm going to lose it. I love you. And I know you're going to walk out of here. Some of y'all are walking out of here today mad at me. And I get that. Sometimes a daddy's just got to give it real to his kids. And that's what I gave you today. If you're sitting in this room right now, and you're along with half the people in this room, that literally as I'm working through everything that I was doing besides the new stuff, and you're giving me a blank stare, you need to come see me. Don't wait until the last minute. Come see me. It's not worth being mad and not seeing me and bombing this quiz. Here we go. On this, this is where we left off yesterday. And I told you that you needed to get this about the polyatomics, naming those oxy anions for this whole thing. Oxy acid nomenclature. So we left off here yesterday. If your notes look different than mine that I got drawn up here, these two columns here may be flipped, but I decided to flip them because this looks better because we're going to have the polyatomic suffix actually broke down here next to the oxy acid suffix. So I think it works better that way. If you decide that uh, it doesn't, you can do whatever. I don't care. Cool. Go for it. Okay. All right, so in this. Here's the thing, when you're going from the polyatomic suffix to the oxy acid suffix, there's a change that happens. The change is you will go from the ending of 8. It's all about the suffixes, whether you're an 8 or an ite. You will change from the ending 8, and it will go to ic, and then you'll put acid at the end. If the ending is ite, you will go to us, O-U-S, and write acid at the end. Whenever I told you I'm not holding anything back on this quiz, I meant it. If you do not put acid, it is considered wrong. If you're naming an acid, at the end of the name, it should say acid. I'm 
Then you're dealing with something different. You're not dealing with an acid. You're just dealing with binary. Binary acid is the key. This is the key in telling whether you're dealing with an acid. This is the key. The first element is hydrogen. That goes. Always hydrogen. Always hydrogen. That goes for binary and it goes for oxy acid. If the very first element is hydrogen, you automatically jump to it's an acid. Then you ask yourself, is there two elements present? If there's two elements present, then it's a binary acid. If there's three elements present, the rule you learned before still applies. If there's three or more elements, there's a polyatomic present. What acid deals with polyatomic? Oxy acid. So here's these subtle little change, and this is why this one gets the most complex. If you don't got the oxy uh, anion nomenclature down, so the per root 8, root 8, root 8, hypo root 8, you're going to struggle with the oxy acid because you're literally just changing the ending. So per root, it's 8, so you change it to it. And put acid. Per root it acid. Yeah, it's literally all your chain. Yes. Per states. You're gonna see here in a minute. I got example names will work and example formulas will work. Then you have Root 8 becomes root it acid. Then you jump down here to root it. It ends in it, so we change it to root us. O U S acid. Then you have hypo root it becomes hypo root us acid. So in this, we're going to work an example. This is a great example. First off, it's going to see how well you know those polyatomics. And second off, it's going to help you in looking and saying, how many hydrogens do you put for it? So we're going to use phosphate as the root. So then we'll, per, we'll build from there. We're going to do perphosphate, phosphate, Phosphite and then hypophosphite. <coughs> so remember what we said about these uh, those oxy anion nomenclature. Know the most common one. Know the root, eight. which is just root eight. eight. So we're dealing with phosphate, phosphate, which is the most common. But what is phosphate's chemical formula? The O4. Three minus. So that right there, I'm literally going to show you my trick. And every time I do these oxy, uh, oxy acids, I literally build it off the oxy anions. Whether you see me do it or not, I'm doing it mentally. So I start here. I'm at the root. I have phosphate, so root 8. I'm going to change the ending to the acid. So it's going to be phos, thick, acid. Now within this phosphic acid, I literally write the polyatomic down first. So PO4. Yep. Do what? 
It's not get. This is what I do mentally to get me there. Because everything we start with is here. So I start with the polyatomic so that I know how many hydrogens to put with it, which brings us to here. We change the ending of the name, but then for me to get the chemical formula right, I still look and say phosphic acid. Okay, that's ick at the end. That means it came from A. So phosphate, phosphate, PO4, 3 minus. But this is an acid. So to make it an acid, what's the first element? So we got to put hydrogen in here. Now how many hydrogens you put, here's the trick. What's the number with the charge? Put that in. Because when you put three of those, it removes that. So, what is that? Will that kind of be on our quiz? Um, oh, yeah. How will that be sure. worded? Like, how will we? Um, it will be worded as phosphic acid. And I want you to give me the formula. Or I'll give you H3PO4. And I want phosphic acid. Okay. So, you have to. So, anytime it says like. Okay, the the H3, this is how I did it. So I got the phosphate here, which just comes from memory. But then when I look at it, I know it's an acid. So hydrogen has to be first. Because it's an acid, hydrogen has to be first. But how many hydrogens do I put? My trick to that is just looking at the charge. You see that's a three negative? Well, every hydrogen's positive, so I need three hydrogens. Once I do that, it takes that off. It removes that A, put the acid. Yeah? How do you know the difference in an oxy acid or a, a B word? Binary acid. Yeah. Binary, binary acid, mm -hmm. the key to it, binary. There's two elements. Okay, but there's two elements. If you, there's three elements. If you just gave us the PO4. If I gave you PO4, three minus, that's phosphate. That's not phosphic acid. I'm showing you, I'm walking you through how I'm building the acid in my head. Okay, okay so you're not going to give us the PO4, you're going to give us the H. I will give you both and expect you to be able to name both. You now should be able to name this as phosphoric acid. But why, did, why would we put the B acid on the PO4? Binary? Because it's not binary acid. Because there's three elements. It was just the P O. Okay, are you saying is it P O four? Three negative. Three negative? That's not an acid. What's the first element? Phosphorus. And it has a charge. What's charge when there's two elements present and there's a charge, what's it tell you? Polyatomic. Name it based off polyatomic. <coughs> so then we're literally just going to build from here, okay? So up here up top, we got the per. It's one more oxygen. So per phos. Big acid. Below it, you have one less oxygen than the root. That's when you're doing with phos. Fuss. Acid. And then down here at the very bottom, it's two oxygens fewer. That's when you're dealing with the hypo. Phos. Phosphorus. I missed, missed that alarm. I misspelled. Phosphorus. Acid. <coughs> and then you build. You'll build the chemical formulas from there. <coughs> Remember what I'm saying, because this is literally what I'm saying to you. Start off with the polyatomic. Start off with that oxyanion. So in this case, per phosphic, which means eight. Okay, if you flip that back. So per phosphate was PO5, three negatives. Now make it an acid. Making an acid, you got to put a hydrogen on it. Goes first. How many hydrogens? Why three? Because that's the charge. That's the charge. It's that simple. 
So take that out. And then you can come down here to the phosphus acid. Phosphus acid, us, came from ite, so phosphite, which is PO3, three, three negative. Okay, just please pardon the interruption, but we need freshmen to report to the auditorium at this time. Freshmen to the auditorium for a brief meeting. So whenever you do that, we've got to put hydrogen at the front. <coughs> There's hydrogen. How many hydrogens you put? Three. Grace and Charlie. For these it will. It all is based off that charge. So here, hypophosphorus acid. Hypophosphorus comes from hypophosphite. Yellow, 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 yellow. Hey! Shut up! <laughs> got class going on in here. You can walk quietly to the auditorium. All right. <laughs> Hypophosphite. VO2, 3 negative. So hypophosphite, BO2, 3 negative. So put hydrogen, and remember that hydrogen there, you put the number of hydrogens based off how whatever that charge is. We're going to put that 3 there because all of these have 3 negative charges. Take those 3 negatives off. Yes. I'm not understanding how you get PO3 and PO2. That all goes here. This is where you're starting. Let's do this. Yeah. What? Yeah, go for it. So if you had, let's say, uh, is it silica? Okay. Where it has a negative two charge, that hydrogen would turn into, it would have a two with it, right? So silica, SiO3, two negative. Make it an acid. So in this in this case, what you're doing is silicate. 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 Not spelling takes big. Silicate. Okay. So in this, <coughs> we're going to turn it into an acid. So to do that, formula-wise, what has to be first? Your ice. So hydrogen. How many hydrogens do you put? It would be two. two. So let's put two. Why do you say put two? Because there's two negative charge. So now that has changed this. That's no longer silicate. So name it. If you're going from the root A, it would be solid. 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 Is Spell that, it. Is that right? I see. It will be silicic. I see, I see. Silic acid. Silic acid. Hypo silic. It's back to that double vowel thing. If you gave me the two eyes there, I wouldn't be upset. Hypo silic acid. So silic acid. No hypo in front of it? Because what did it come from? It came from silicate. the root, silicate. Okay. So, first, you take, you add one. Right? Off the root. That's the thing you got to get. Okay, on, so do you remember the polyatomic one. ion sheet I gave you? Yes. Okay, on those, you have certain ones that were eight, ended in eight, certain ones ended in eight. Mm -hmm. Some started with per, some started with hypo. That's this right here. These two things here explain that. The most common one is the eight. So like carbonate. <coughs> What's carbonate? CO3 to negative. That's literally all I memorize. And now I build it from there. Go here. Let's go up here to per. Perudate. Okay? 
So it's going to be per carbonate, it's one more oxygen than the root. What's the chemical formula? C2 negative. C2. One more oxygen than the root. This is the root. CO4 to negative. CO4 to negative. So you would change the. You would change the. No, that charge will stay the same. The only thing that changes on is permanganate and manganate. I think. What about the other things? Look, one just put, we put CO2 in here. Here, so root I would be carbonite, CO2, 2 negative. Two less oxygens than the root. Not this one, than the root. This is the root. Hypo-rootite, so hypo-carbonite, CO2 negative. So then from there, you have to be able to do this before you can do this. <laughs> Alright? <coughs> this is what I'm saying. What say? I'm going to be completely honest with y'all right now. And this is being recorded so you can show your parents later on. All of you that, that have right? came in here today, I'm very proud of you. Because my butt chewing I gave you yesterday has had an effect. You came in here, I actually paid attention for the most part, there's a couple of y'all with exceptions. And you've actually been involved in class and when you're confused, you're asking questions and still just sitting there and waiting until we're gonna have the quiz. You're gonna have to keep doing this throughout the class though. If you don't believe me, come in my physics class and ask two students. I had two students that were not doing so hot on physics until I finally just chewed everybody's butt in physics and they knew who I was chewing. Everybody in the room knew who was getting it. And then the next day they came and totally changed it. And they literally, those two on the last quiz have got A's. And they have understood everything we've done because they came to class prepared, ready to go, and focused. If you keep this up, you can do this. I thought he was going to scream at us. I'm not going to yell. I'm proud of you guys. But I want you to keep this up. Because you see right here is a is proof of what this class is going to be. you got to be able to do this foundation to do this. <laughs> it builds on top of it. Okay? If you don't know your polyatomic ions, you're not going to know the charges, so you can't get these formulas right. All right? Just a bit of just a random question with this. Yeah. Would you be able to find out which one was most acidic with this? <laughs> no. Most acidic, and you want to talk about the most acidic, there are seven strong acids out in the note. That's the cycle of And whenever we get to the acids, the basis will talk about